in the last video I had the turbine turned up on its on its edge so the axis was this direction instead of this direction <clears throat> and that was flinging a lot of water during my entire like uh, 12 days of vacation it was flinging water and everything in here was just soaked so I I moved everything inside and I put the turbine in this axis I rebuilt the housing a little bit to uh, make it how you see not much to see in there right now and then I left it open for uh, accidentally a little bit too long and it snowed inside here with the lid and the lid was covered on snow on the back side here but I hosed it all down with the hose to get rid of most of the snow uh, there's still some remaining but it'll warm up in here again once I close the lid I do need to address uh, insulation and air venting because it does have a lot of moisture in here well now that that's not flinging water it won't have as much moisture but I need to, do need to put in vents and I was thinking about doing a, a second lid in here like I'm gonna have a perimeter of foam on the walls and then a foam lid that'll be underneath this lid so it'll be a separate lid on a separate hinge that's just made out of foam so it won't like rot or corrode or anything and then this will just be protecting it from uh, rain essentially and I'm gonna put some vents in this so all the wood in here can dry out properly And then I might put some vents down in there too. Maybe some sort of ducting from the the fan. I don't know uh, Yeah, not sure yet Also For the past few days I had it hooked up to this hose here uh, Just to keep the water flowing And that just dumps the water in the pit to keep the water flowing and to keep everything in here from freezing. So I have the the three-phase power there going into this extension cord, which goes into the into my garage. So let me close this up, and we'll go into the garage and see what that's doing. All right. So there's that quiet. We can hear the road more than the turbine. The current temperature out here is, I looked this up and I converted it to Celsius for you guys. It's uh, ambient of, well, here you go, 19 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 7C, and feels like 6 Fahrenheit, negative 14C. And then we can also see the wind speed there from my weather station, which is right up there. Uh, weather station is gusting to 30 miles per hour that's 48 kilometers per hour and it's averaging around 18 miles per hour which is 27 kilometers per hour so in here in the garage i have everything set up where it's dry and warm so we won't have any electrical issues in the last video this power meter here was uh 100% lit, so it wasn't showing anything. So I opened it up, let it dry out, and reconnected it, and it's working again. But, so the, the last video that I really did with this, it was showing 186 watts, and I have the same jet on there now, and it's only doing 136 watts. Well, that's because I have it hooked up a little bit different. If I hooked it up with, let me unplug this load. We can see there the voltage goes way up. I'll disconnect that. So the voltage we see there is 133 watts, but it's showing 45 or 40 watts of power consumption. But I have the power strip turned off, and this is the only load that's on it. So this is reading some sort of voltage differential across that, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. It may just need um, better insulation from the board, but everything in here is dry. So it shouldn't be getting any voltage across the board. Uh, so we'll turn this on. You see the lights light up there. Just those three right now. I don't have those on. And we're at 99 volts, 140 watts. 
uh, even with all of these lights on, it's approximately the same power consumption because the more load you get, the lower the turbine spins, the lower the voltage, it just draws more amps. So your watts is approximately the same. So I will turn these guys off. As I turn them off, the voltage goes up, the other lights get brighter. You guys probably can't really see that because the camera adjusts for it automatically. You see we're still doing 144 watts. So I can disconnect those. And then this is the other load that I have for it. I'm still around 148, 150 watts, 142 watts we see there. And that's all because uh, I can't get the nozzle aligned perfectly like it was before with the bulkhead fitting, moving it around in there. It's just, um, it's finicky. So I need to do something else. And then the, the load that I have it hooked up to right now is this radiator, <laughs> which is beside my desk. So the radiator was hot already. It was plugged in. I mean, it's still kind of hot from when it was plugged into mains power. But now it's plugged into the turbine and getting 140 some watts off of that. And a little bit of news. Oh, I, I should also mention that I may need to put some dielectric grease on these fittings. Uh, and there's a little bit of rust on them, so maybe I'd need to switch to a, a screw and a nut, machine screw and a nut connection instead of these press on connectors. You can see some rust there. That's probably not helping. And then also not helping is I have 100 feet of extension cord on it. Yes, the extension cord is probably causing some voltage drop, but not much because there's only two amps, two and a half amps flowing through there, and it's rated for, I don't know, what, 15 amps? Uh, sorry, you guys will probably think that I'm cheating here, but it's, it's connected there underneath the board. So we're well, well below the, the rating for the cord, so we're not getting a whole lot of voltage drop across that for sure. And then uh, another another bit of info is I have a better charge controller coming. I just bought it thanks to uh, Trent. Gave me a little bit of extra money last night in the stream, and now I can afford something a little bit better than that, which is not suited for hydroelectric power. It's good for solar, but not hydro. So I got a... Uh, a Midnight Classic uh, non-SL version rated for 200 volts for my system. So now I need to get some uh, some better batteries. I have some batteries here. Well, there's one that Andy gave me or is letting me borrow. And then I have the one I've been using for all of this testing. It's not rated for much power or capacity. It's a smaller battery. And then I also have two inverters here. They're both uh, 1,115 or 1,500 watts to play around with, but ultimately in my system I'm going to need something a little bit bigger. I need some batteries too. I need a 48 volt battery system ideally to, to run a, a proper size inverter easily without ridiculous cables. And I need to find some suitable batteries then too. And that's on my task list. Task list. So I'll see you guys around next time on Joe Plays With Water.